Hey guys, it's Moon Lord here, and as I promised, here's my video review of Star Ocean The Divine Force. But before we get into it, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that bell to be notified for more JRPG news and fighting game content here on this channel. So let's dive into it. Now, I just want to thank you guys for the amount of love that you guys have shown in my first impression for Star Ocean The Divine Force. I was not expecting to reach the thousands when it comes when it came to that video a lot of star ocean fans and a lot of jrpg fans in general who never played the star ocean games really appreciate my uh thorough input when it came to my impressions of the star ocean and the divine force i really appreciate that so if you guys haven't even checked that out i advise you go check this out before checking out my review so before we even dive into this i just want to let you guys know if you're just coming into my review i have bought the game on the xbox series x i could have got it on the ps5 but I really want to build my JRPG library and show support for the Xbox Series X when it comes to JRPGs because I just love the console. I love the controller, I love the console, and I, I love to have more JRPGs um, on that platform. So we're gonna dive into it. So as far as Star Ocean is concerned, the Divine Force, I must say that this game to me was in a written apology um, for what they have done with Star Ocean Integrity and Faithlessness which have released on PlayStation 4 six years ago i gave my opinion on that gave my review and i also did a deep dive into it as well so if you interested in wanting to know that and how well or how well it received or what i thought about the game you can definitely check that out as well but this definitely seemed like this was definitely an apology for what they had produced with the last game because man you can tell that tri ace have put a really a lot of love into this game this game have really really surprised me uh, like i said before i walked into this game um, just on like like with low expectations, you know, I, it felt like I was in abusive relationships, you know, that I was abused and then the person comes back and, and she comes back and telling me that, hey, you know, I promise I love you. I would never hurt you, you know, just please forgive me and then come back and get abused again. That's how I felt is like this was a true apology, a true, true apology um, to the Star Ocean fans, because as far as the presentation is concerned, I think this game has has a really really good presentation as far as the art style and even the graphics many people talked about the graphics when the game was first revealed even me i wasn't too fond of how the game looked uh, visually it wasn't really that appealing to me but after playing the demo and to give my first impression and playing through the entire game man they've really done a really good job the lighting the uh especially when you go to these different vistas especially forests going through caverns going through uh machinery and uh, facilities futuristic more modern like facilities it looked really really good and especially the towns the towns have is felt more vibrant have a lot of uh, have a lot of life to them as far as the color palette is concerned and the overall aesthetic and feel of how well they presented it now as far as the character models are concerned i know people still don't like the lifeless doll look that the characters have but i must say compared to the more recent the compared to the last three star ocean games i would say that the divine force has done a better job with the character models and they emote a bit a much better than the last games they still need to work on it and hopefully that if they make another star ocean game that they'll do better as far as giving the facial expressions much more life but it's definitely an upgrade and i had really no complaints when it comes to that each character especially the character designs for all the main characters found in the party was really really good i love all the character the, the armors i love the outfits it really fit the character's personality and everything about it and i as far as the voice acting is concerned voice acting to me was top notch and these english dubs are getting better better and better and like i i love english dub when it comes to my games anyway and but a few games uh, i prefer japanese but english dub is getting better and better like i said when it comes to raymond the main character i like this dude man like the voice whoever voiced this guy he done a really really good job with the character and now he's became one of my favorite protagonists and speaking of characters i guess we can leave off from the presentation we can talk about the story now when it comes to star ocean games i've always said this before star ocean is not a final fantasy when it comes to story final fantasy is its own thing final fantasy is actually the standard when it comes to stories storytellers and jrpgs and star ocean it was always in its own lane they have good stories but they're not final fantasy stories but they suffice they get you through and it's interesting but i would say about divine force divine force really caught me off guard it really shocked me in terms of story quality it's actually had a pretty damn good story and i won't spoil it here 
but I will give you a synopsis for the very beginning. For starters, you can pick up the two, pick two between two different protagonists, Raymond Lawrence and Princess Leticia. You can choose either one of them. Um, Lawrence is pretty much Raymond. He's pretty much um, more so from the futuristic side, from space. So you more so get a different perspective from there. And then you got Princess Leticia. She's from planet A from the Aster region, from her planet. So you can pretty much uh, play as her to get the perspective of the people who comes from um, who's from that planet and now coming in contact from people with from outer space. Now whether or not how you want to engage this is up to you. Some people suggest that you pick Princess Leticia first is because you're going in blind. You're a person that's interacting from somebody from a totally different universe, a totally different world, a totally different galaxy. So you're going into it from a different perspective. So there's going to be more mystery from Princess Leticia's side since you don't know what's going on. Rather than when you pick Raymond, you already know what's going on. You're you're seeing it from the galactic point of view and you're just coming down onto the planet. So there's mysteries on both sides. But if you really want to get lost, people suggest that you go with, plant, plant, uh, go with Princess Leticia. Me, on the other hand, I pick Raymond, of course. Um, he was aboard the ship called the Leetus. He's the captain of his own cargo ship. He comes from a, a family bloodline of merchants. So they're pretty powerful, pretty famous family. And what happens is, as he's transporting the cargo, which he don't know what he's transporting, um, this ship comes up out of nowhere from the Galactic Federation and ends up attacking their ship. And they don't know why they're being attacked. And then instantly, they had to pretty much bail out and end up crash landing on... The planet Aster, and when they land on the planet, Princess Leticia ends up running to Raymond, hands him a sword, and then they end up fighting off the monsters. And from there, he had pretty much talked to Princess Leticia. She promised him to say, "Hey, we'll help you find your friends, but in return, help us try to figure out what's going on with the Empire that's attacking, attacking my kingdom, because their kingdom, for some reason, has some advanced weaponry that they have never seen before." Now, as far as the Federation is concerned. This is thing called an Undevelopment Act is where if you come from a futuristic, more advanced civilization and you come in contact with, with, with a planet and the citizens that's underdeveloped, you cannot influence them with your technology, weaponry, medicine or anything, because that will cause catastrophic events that goes on way before um, that this civilization is supposed to advance. They pull the advance naturally. And what's been going on is before Raymond had landed, the Empire has got a hold of some advanced technology and they don't know how that is possible. So I'll leave it at that point because you start going through, depending on whose side of the story that you pick, you start to unravel this mystery and find out how that this kingdom started running across advanced technology. And when you start to just unravel the mystery behind this, the story gets really, really bonkers in a good way. And I didn't expect this coming from a Star Ocean game at all. So it really captivated me on top of the captivating combat and the gameplay. So we're going to dive right into that right now since a lot of you guys want to know what's the gameplay like for Star Ocean. Now I've done an overview video on my first impressions talking about Star Ocean the Divine Force gameplay. But I definitely want to break it down even more. I'm going to tell you right now. This is an action RPG. Star Ocean, Star Ocean was always known for being an action RPG even back during the SNES time. Um, and they carried this and evolved the formula even more. I must say this, the combat was very, very addictive. It just kept me going. And I always said about a Star Ocean game is that as long as the combat's good, you can weather through the story, whether the story is just mediocre to bad or whatever. But the treat about this is the storyline for this game is good and the combat is just excellent. There's so much to learn and so much to pick up in the combat, especially with the AP system. Many people complained about the AP system because the AP system pretty much uh, limits you to what you can do because each skill, which you have a skill, you have a chain combo tree, which I talked about in my previous video. Is this is where you take your skills and you put them on your tree with the X, Y, and the B button. And you can set up your pretty much your combos. Now each skill takes a certain amount of AP. Now when you start off in battle, you only get four to five AP. But in order to increase your AP meter is you have to blindside and position yourself when you fight an enemy. When you blindside them, they don't notice you. They pretty much glow yellow, freeze in place. And you, once you attack them, it increases your AP bar. Once you have an increased AP bar, it allows you to make crazy long combo strings, which is really, really addictive. But 
you cannot get hit. The moment you get hit, you start to lose AP, and that's where the balance come in. So you have to try really, really hard and try your best to not get hit, so you can be able to keep the long AP, so you can create these crazy combos. There's a lot of room for creativity when it comes to combos compared to the last game, Faithful, uh, to Integrity and Faithlessness, which was poor in, in um, player creativity when it comes to combat. There's, but there is so much to do with the combat, and I really, really enjoyed that. And then you're also able to swap and switch characters and you control any character on the playing field at any given time. So micromanaging is even more fun because each character, and as I said before, is very fun to play. The mages have their own special traits to them and then you have the characters who are more weapon based and combo based, they have their own unique traits that specialize to them. And that's what makes the game much more involved, much more intriguing when it comes to combat. Constantly switching back and forth to figure out what's the best move, the best technique, the best strategy that you can pull off during combat so you can come out successful uh, after any boss fight or any special fight or just in combat in general. You also have a skill tree. Skill tree, you can spend a lot of points with that. Um, it allows you to unlock more skills, increase your character's defense, uh, your intelligence, your attack power, your guts. There's a lot of things you do with the skill tree by using your SP. You gain your SP by leveling up, defeating enemies, to and constantly keep increasing your power. So there's a lot to do when it comes to the skill tree. And I didn't feel everybody's skill tree. I think it's one character that actually maxed out the skill tree. But there's so much you can do with the SP. And you have to use your SP wise, wisely to either buff some of your special skills or to buff your passive abilities, buff your... Um, uh, active abilities there's so much you can use your sp for so you really have to balance out where you want to focus those points in really really loved it now as far as exploration is concerned exploration the maps are really really big it's not an open world game but each zone that you go into is very very big so there's a lot to explore and i think the encouraging thing that uh, encourage you to play through all of the levels is that when you use Duma, which is the thing that flies around that uses you, that you use as an assist to be able to fly, float, and navigate into side and blind sides your enemies, you can also use also use that to traverse to fly up to areas that you cannot reach, and then you collect these um, these spheres or these crystals for Duma that you can use to exchange for points to level up your Duma. So there's really really incentive to explore the entire map, and the maps are really really big. They feel like actual environments, and this was the issue that. I had with Tales of um, of Arise that the maps are really small, but they give you the illusion that they're big, but they felt like dungeons. Even forests and towns felt like dungeons. They didn't feel like real vistas. They didn't feel like real locations. This in Star Ocean: The Divine Force, the locations felt like locations. Forests felt like forests. Caves felt like caves. Dungeons felt like dungeons. Uh, um, scientific facilities felt like scientific facilities. These locations felt like actual locations, living, breathing places. And I would stop at times just to look at the map and just look at how beautiful the locations are. Just be it, and simply because of how well the presentation is, the art design that they decided to go with, the lighting effects they decided to go with. So there's a lot of things to explore and to look for every nook and cranny. So you'll have a, if you're a completionist or you're a person that just love to explore and get a, 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 a feel of how the world is of a particular game that you're playing, this is definitely it for you when it comes to that. Now, as far as the towns are concerned, what I found unique that they put effort in, and I give Trice a lot of like credit for this, is that is that some NPCs you can't talk to, but just because you can't talk to them doesn't mean they're not talking. You can actually walk up to every NPC and they all have some form of dialogue so even though you can't click on them, you stand stand next to them they will talk and if they're with somebody else you can actually hear the conversations that they're having with other npcs that's what makes the world feel more alive more believable is where you have npcs carrying on their daily life and just because you can't talk to them doesn't mean it pulls you out of it it just it, it just means that hey they just don't want to talk to you or they just going on with their lives their everyday lives and that's what i appreciate that so i give them props that that triace is really trying in this game and that's what makes this game even more surprising to me in that regard now there's also a mechanic speaking of towns is this mechanic called private actions which has been found in every last star ocean game now what private action is is pretty much the party with the spin and it's just you and the main character it's just you and you can travel around the the, the towns 
or whatever location that you in and you can you can find your party members scattered within the town and you talk to them and then when you talk to them certain events trigger where you start to get extra backstory build relationships with the characters and get to know more about your set that set particular um party member which i thought was a good idea and i suggest that you try your best every chance you get when the party disband when you go into a town look for every last party member because you're gonna find some interesting dialogue and set pieces between the characters which i found really really interesting that's what made me love the characters even more and grew so attached to them this is another one of those uh art jrpg parties that you will grow to love after you get to know them even more and more and yes there is a uh, uh, uh infinity system because depending on which character that you attach yourself to and you also need a particular item that you need to craft in order for this to happen would change the ending of the game there's 18 different endings there these are slight changes you got a default ending but by the time you reach the end of the game depending on your infinity with set said character you will get an extra uh, uh cut scene like post credit cut scene just with you and that character to build more onto that and speaking of routes there's two special characters in the game you have theo and then you have jj now just like any other star ocean game well they, they haven't done it in a while but they just started doing it again um in star ocean there's a bunch of additional characters now some characters you can't get on your first playthrough depending on what characters that you accept in your party allows you to not be able to gain access to other characters well this game is no different Depending on what route you pick, if you pick Raymond, you only get access to JJ. And you have to do a special uh, uh, quest in order to keep him permanently in your team. And if you pick Princess Leticia, you only can you could be able to get Theo, but you can't get JJ. So you have to do a special quest to be able to keep him permanently in your party. So you also got to keep that in mind depending on what route that you decide to go with when playing Star Ocean The Divine Force. So I'll leave that to you and you can leave that in the comment section below and tell me what route that you chose and which one of the special characters are special or are better. Either Theo or JJ himself. I definitely want to hear your thoughts in the comment section below for those who played it and completed the game. But moving on. Speaking of uh, item creation, yes, it's back again. I think this is one of the most... When it comes to Star Ocean, Star Ocean has one of the most complicated, I would say the most complicated um, item creation systems in any JRPG besides Dark Cloud, I guess. Um, when it comes to Star Ocean, I never really mess with the item creations, but my friends plays the hell out of them because they're the best parts of the game, and that's no different here. Even though I mess with it, some of it, every character has a special ability um, that they're good at. Now, they can learn, they can be able to uh, craft, compound, engineering, authoring, uh, smithing and there's all these other kinds of trade they can do any kind of type of trade but each character has their specialty and what they're good at and you got to use your AP points to level up their specialty and many many other things that can help um, allow you to create like rare weapons and rare armors and accessories for your characters now this is really 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 gets deep is because many players spend most of their hours just item crafting item crafting is the biggest part of Star Ocean um, from what I understand within the community itself most people because I it took me 44 hours to be, beat the game Some people already spent a hundred hours and most of that spent for crafting items and getting trying to get the best weapons And the best armors as possible and which means a lot of grinding Going to a lot of areas to fight special monsters to get special drops and everything of a sort So if you're a person that's into item creation to see what busted items that you can create well Go at your heart content because there's a lot that you can do here and to digest when it comes to that. And there's a whole complete guide that you can find on, find on the internet or on YouTube itself to get yourself started. Game. Now, as far as difficulty is concerned, um, I played the normal difficulty, but I noticed that the game, I, I over leveled. So I was started breezing through the game pretty good. So the ending or last balls wasn't as challenging as I w may have wanted it to be. So if you a person who love action RPGs, I suggest that you go into the game on the hardest difficulty if you want to get be challenged and don't get me wrong even in the normal difficulty i was challenged quite a bit with some of the bosses where i died quite a, or quite a few times actually um while playing this game so don't get it twisted so even in normal difficulty there are some challenges here um as well but if you want to get really really challenged and really put your your skills to the test with the combat and, and actually get more out of combat i suggest to start the game on the hardest um difficulty but as i would say man overall this package um star ocean divine force it's a really really good game and the music was really good 
Um, it's some of the best that tri have put out there. It just takes me back to the classic era of Star Ocean. And as far as the story, if you played the previous Star Ocean games, before I close this out, I want to let you know, if you played the previous Star Ocean games, you don't have to play them. But if you play all the other Star Ocean games, you're going to appreciate how they tie in all the Star Ocean games um, in this story. This is really a true love letter to Star Ocean fans. Star Ocean is back, baby. When I say you explore other planets and you, you actually go out into space in this game, you actually do in this game. And this is a true love letter because it does weave and tie in all the Star Oceans. You don't need knowledge of it, but you re you will love the story even more. That how they tie these in as Easter eggs and how they show the cause and effect of some things that happened in past Star Ocean games and how it got to this point. But you don't need the knowledge of it because of how they tell it in this game. But you will appreciate it more if you played the previous games. And I'll just leave it at that. And you'll know what I'm talking about once you play through the game. But that pretty much wraps this up. I definitely give this game a 8.5 out of 10. 8.5 out of 10. I enjoyed the hell out of this game. Had really, really fun with this game. Yes, there was some cons with the game as far as sometimes the cameras can get a little janky at times. Um, even though the game run at 60 frames per second, sometimes it, keep, it dips for some reason, I think it was poorly optimized, so sometimes it would dip um, where it, it lags just a little bit in some areas of the game. Uh, um, and the questing, the, the questing, I think there should have been some better quality of life when it comes to questing. The, some of the quests ain't described pretty well, so some of them are quite confusing at times. But other than that, man, I really enjoy the Star Ocean and Divine Forest. I say you must have this, add this into your, uh, to your collection of JRPGs. And this is a great starting point for those who never played Star uh, Star Ocean and want to get into it. I say play this, play this, and then take a history lesson by going back to see where it all started from. But this game really is the underdog of JRPGs for this year. I was not really expecting much from this game because of how badly I was burnt with uh, integrity and faithlessness, which was the last one six years ago. But I would say that this is a real good game. Star Ocean is back. Star Ocean is back, baby. I can't wait, and I'm looking forward to what they produce next within the Star Ocean universe. And I can't wait to see if they get a bigger budget because this game is is a double A. It's not a triple A. This is a double A game. This game is a is a pretty low budget game, but you can tell the passion was put into it, and they pulled as much as they could out of the budget they had. And if this game sell really, really well, I would love to see a true next gen. Um, or current gen um, Star Ocean game. So that pretty much wraps up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed um, this review for Star Ocean The Divine Force. I really enjoyed this game. And I'm not done talking about this game. Um, I'm gonna do a separate spoiler video because I really wanna talk about Star Ocean The Divine Force because I think this is a big turnaround for Tri-Ace and for the series in general. This game had really surprised me. This game had really shocked me. And I didn't expect much from this game. I was highly anticipating Xenoblade Chronicles 3 and that game didn't meet my expectations but I didn't expect much from this and this game surpassed my expectations so I'm telling you right now pick this game up you would not be disappointed in this so I wrap this video up if you like the video make sure you hit that like button because it definitely helps me out in the algorithm hit the subscribe button and also hit that bell to be notified for more JRPG news in the near future on this channel this is Mugen Lord signing off I'll see you game fiends later peace out